you have you haven't got a clue. Yeah. So you can't be the coach and the parent. It's very difficult, especially if you haven't actually gone through that journey. But a lot of these people they try to try to take over, yeah. and it makes it actually more difficult for if you don't have a strong enough coach to. Like a sport that you're just by yourself in the ring, you say there's a whole support system, there's a family system behind it. Are there certain fighters who have certain attitudes as well, who 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 don't want to play the team game? And it's like, I'm in this alone, don't need your help. Yeah, you, you, it's your job to come in and help spar me or something, and that's it, I don't want a relationship. Do you have fighters do that as well? So I'm fortunate to be in a gym that the biggest ego in our gym is our coach. So anybody that's coming with a bad attitude, it quickly very quickly gets dispelled. So um, I'm fortunate enough to say that I'm I'm not part of a gym that has any, like none of my teammates have that kind of attitude. And for those that like kind of showed a bit of that attitude, didn't last long. They, they left the gym. So um, I'm fortunate, but I have heard stories, yeah. you know, in other gyms and so on and so forth. Um, but everyone's individual, like whatever it is, whatever traumas that they've had that have got them, you know, in this direction, it's still going to play a part. Um, and like I say, this is why coaches are so important to manage. And I find, weird enough, from, from my experience, the people that give off that energy or that aura tend to be the boxers I've come across. And I just find it's a very different game. And I think it's because there's so much money in that game. And a lot of the guys that, bring you up to that level your amateur coaches can't take you on as a pro so you've got like almost like a father figure from your amateur days moving up to your professional when you become professional that father figure disappears and now you hire people to then keep you going and i, I find if you have a coach that is dependent on the finance that you're going to provide they're not going to tell you or they very rarely are going to tell you what you need to hear sometimes, especially the bigger you get in, in the game. Yeah. Uh, you get people that just end up with uh, a lot of yes men around them. Now, one of the, big, the one of the people that I'm most scared of is my coach. So and he doesn't care about the money that I can can make. He's good. He's set up and he does it because he's passionate about it which means if it comes to a decision that I'm wanting to make and it's my ego that's getting away, yeah, I want to make this decision. He's like, I'm not, we're not backing that. That's not happening. And he'll tell me my, the honest truth. And at the high level, that's what you need. So I find those type of fighters will eventually come un, undone at the top game if you don't have somebody around you that can, you know, put you back on track. Yeah, you need someone to keep you in 100%, check. 100%, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> quickly think you're bigger than the coach yeah, yeah. then the industry humbles you oh 100 percent. so yeah it's again each to their own and i'm sure people can make it in however but i say nine <laughs> times out of ten it has to be done with somebody that's that's got your back 100 and i can tell you exactly what you need to hear nice mike um last time you came was last may 2023 mm -hmm. Um, a lot's happened since then. Yeah. At that at that stage, you was transitioning from Bellator. Um, talk to us. What's been going on? Yeah, like I said, a lot's happened. I'm trying <laughs> to have a thing where to start. Um, ask me. I'm terrible with all that kind of stuff. So I'm trying to think. So the fights between then and now and the likes so literally last twelve to fourteen months. Yeah. Um, so uh, my bare knuckle would be involved in that now. Mike Perry. Yeah. So the bare knuckle's involved in that. What, so it, what made that one happen? So weird enough, um, I had a fight that unfortunately I lost. It was a you know a, a, a tough fight, very stylistically. Tough. Uh, but I'm I'm talking about the fight before the bare knuckle fight. Right. Okay. So stylistically, was it was a uh, um, Storley, yeah, who's a wrestler. So uh, it was it was like uh, it was for uh, the interim belt, and um, it would have allowed me to then fight for the person who's who had the belt at the time, which was uh, Amasov. Um, exceptional fighter. Um, and again, it was just a bit of a, a a bore in the sense that he he came in and I find it a lot with, with my style and the way, you know, the attributes that I have, people sometimes come in to survive the fight, not win the fight. Yeah. Obviously, with that, 
with doing that, they can win the fight in terms of like the judges will give, you know, award them the, the decision, but they didn't come in here to actually beat me up. Mm. And I feel like if you're in a combat sport, the, the main aim of the game, obviously, if you get two talented fighters and it goes the distance because they're talented and but they're both trying to go at each other, but it goes distance, that's where the judges should come in. But you shouldn't go in there on game and everyone loved him for it, but he would take you down and then try to inflict damage and try to stop yeah. you and try to submit you, try to hit you. Like the, he was like, I'm, I'm trying to beat you up, mm -hmm. and, which is part of the game. Whereas then you got these guys that I'm finding, I'm coming across where they'll hold you and it's just like, so I don't do anything else. I just want to waste time. I'm just looking at the <laughs> clock. There is because I don't. I just don't want you to, to do anything to me. And I found like I had that fight, and even the owner himself at the time, Scott Coco, he and he very rarely is opinionated on on fights. Um, he came out. I was like, yeah, I don't think you know Storley should have won that. Um, he didn't do anything, and so on and so forth. But then, straight after that fight. Because nothing had happened to me, I'm fresh, like still ready to go. I'm like, yeah, I want to get back in. Like, I'm eager to get back in. And they were like, oh, we don't actually have a another fight for you until I'm sure it was like the end of the year or the beginning of the next year because of all the slots and it, nonsense. But I was just like, I, I'm not waiting that long. You want to stay active. I want to stay active, and I'm again after going through such a hard camp to not really allow it, not feel like you've got any of that energy out. Mm -hmm. I was like, nah, I'm not waiting that long. Like, I'm going to... Because they've allowed me to box before. So I've said to them, like, I'm going to try and get a boxing fight. And they're like, yeah, no, fine. Just let us know. Let, this let is us Bellator. Know this is Bellator. Okay. Weirdly enough, I don't know, about a week later, my, my coach was like, oh, random one. Up to you if you want to do it. Uh, David Hay is doing some work with BKFC. And okay. David Hay's good friends with, like, the team, us, uh, you know actually boxed with him first um and he's like oh they he was just he mentioned your name and everyone was excited and they were like oh we'd love you they would love you to fight would you if you you, you know if you want to take it uh and i was like if that means i can keep active then let's go yeah um they put forward mike perry's name i was like that's a great name great personality yeah. like to just kind of for the build up as well um went back to Bellator, told them about it, and they were like, cool, no problem. I would say, again, we, they, it's hard for them to say no at that point because they don't have a fight available for me at the time. And they were just like, yeah, cool, no problem. It's a good, good time. So that's when I ended up getting, doing the bare knuckle. Yeah. Uh, have you done one of them before? No, 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 never. It's, it's, it's weird. When I was younger, a lot of the my senior kickboxers and stuff, that, that they would have done bare knuckle. It was quite popular back then. Like but underground, not yeah. it was never public. For us, it hasn't been public for ages. That was actually one of the first shows in like something, like, like something ridiculous. Like something like a hundred years or something. Wow. Uh, that was a public bare knuckle event in the UK. So it was a, again, it's just another thing to be a part of, like of history to bring it, bring that back to the UK after so long. How much was that different to what you was existingly doing? Yes, it's weird. It's, it's it's very different, and uh, some of the keys that were different, I wouldn't even, I I, I overlooked myself. My coach didn't. He? I overlooked. Um. Uh, for example, even just the, the shape of the the ring, ring itself, it made a difference. And my coach was bugging me that whole week. Have you gone in, and tested out the the ring? And I'm like, oh no no no, I'll, I'll do it though. I'll do it though. And even like seriously, the whole time I was just like, I don't know why he's stressing about canvas. Like it's not a big deal. It was a big deal. It made it made a big difference. Even just to have have the awareness and understanding of the directions that I should be cutting in and da 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 da. Um, which is I think one of my. It was a flaw because that's how I ended up getting caught as well because I, I didn't break properly. Um, but anyway, yeah, he's. It was a, it was that the training was boxing, but you could also uh, grapple, so to speak, because they do dirty boxing. 